I'm Thomas Baldrick here at ASCO 2013. One of the big drugs being discussed at this conference is Zofigo, and here to talk more with us about that is Dr. Gillies O'Brien Tear from Oslo, Norway, more importantly representing Algeta USA, where he is the chief medical officer. Thanks for being with us. Nice to meet you. Congratulations. You're, you've ended one journey and you're about to embark on another. It's very exciting. Very exciting. We've come, we brought the drug through clinical development. It's been a, a fairly seamless pathway through development. And we're very excited now to be launching the uh, Zofigo in the USA with our uh, Bayer colleagues. In clinical development, you were brought in to advise on this aspect. Can you talk about your role and what exactly you did? Yes, yeah, so way back in 2004, the investors and the management team brought me in to provide clinical development advice, medical advice on how this drug should be optimally developed. Uh, and so I basically helped design the phase two program, which was already running, but I refined it and expanded it with the help of some US uh, key opinion leaders here in the, in, in the US and in Europe. And we implemented, executed that program, uh, and then we moved into phase three. Uh, in 2008, we initiated the phase three trial. Now, you weren't afraid to take a different approach in the design. Can you talk about what that process was like and what you decided to do? Yes, the design of the trial is fairly unusual or, I would say, um, enterprising in that we included patients who had received chemotherapy, docetaxel, or, and those who were ineligible or had refused chemotherapy. And that is really, at the time, that was and still is a unique study design because the other trials in prostate cancer that have been done in the last few years have focused either on patients who had received chemotherapy or patients who had not received chemotherapy. And the, we identified that this drug, Zofigo, the mechanism of action um, really should not it should not matter whether patients have received chemotherapy or not because it's a, it, it's a mode of action which is bone targeted and releases short, very high energy radiation into the sites of bone secondaries. Uh, and because of that, it, it really shouldn't matter biologically whether the patients have received docetaxel or not. So although docetaxel was a, approved and indicated for these patients, there are some patients who refuse chemotherapy and there are other patients who are not fit for it and it was that group that we identified that we could include in the trial as well as the post chemotherapy patients and nearly half the patients in fact had not received dose taxel in the trial 44 percent so you come to ASCO this year right on the riding the wave of FDA approval obviously you've gotten positive res response from clinicians but what have been um, some of I guess the most frequently asked questions that you're getting well, some of them ask about this uh, population of patients who had not received chemotherapy. They ask how we were able to include them and uh, how we define that population subgroup because they are, of course, used to using chemotherapy. So we just explained that there are a number of patients who actually don't wish to receive chemotherapy. Indeed, in the USA now, there is a trend because of the other available therapies that are um, around. There is a trend towards more patients actually declining or delaying chemotherapy. So that population who were not going to receive chemotherapy, were, they, they can understand were included in the trial. And then there are a few patients who are actually just not fit enough to receive the uh, chemotherapy, either because of their blood workup or because of their general physical condition. So these are the patients we explain to these uh, people who asked that question that we included in the trial. So you've got a bright future. What are the possibilities with Zofigo as you see them now? Well, immediately, of course, we'll be focusing on launching the drug in, in the labeled indication, which is for castration-resistant prostate cancer uh, uh, with bone metastases and symptoms. Um, and it's important to point out that if they have known visceral disease, non-osseous disease, they're not, uh, that is not within the labeled indication. But uh, our partner Bayer has announced that there will be patients, there will be studies conducted in other populations, uh, in earlier stage populations in combination with one of the new hormone drugs. That study will be done by our partners Bayer. Uh, there will be a program in breast cancer because breast cancer patients get bone metastases as well. So there will be a, a program to assess the efficacy of Zofigo in breast cancer with bone metastases. So these are new areas. Um, one other announced area of uh, interest is osteosarcoma. This is a, 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 actually a cancer of the bone in which the secondaries are also composed of bony cells. So it's a very, because uh, Zofigo is bone targeted, that's a very suitable target for this agent. So those are the future areas where we will be expanding into. You'll be a busy man. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Congratulations to <laughs> you. you. Enjoy your much. success, and, and I know there's a lot of hard work coming, coming down the road. Thank you very much. Dr. Gillies O'Brien Terre from Algeta USA, the Chief Medical Officer, talking about their recent success in FDA approval for Sofigo.